Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in a video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're venturing down to the island of what was called German New Guinea, so we can talk about the Battle of Bitta Paka, fought between Germany and Australia, located on German New Guinea on September 11, 1914. Germany's Pacific campaign was in trouble. Count Maximilian von Spee and his fleet were having an increasingly difficult time securing coal to power their naval ships and thereby flex their power in the Pacific. One of the secure havens of the German Pacific fleet was the island of Rabul, a well-stocked island with plenty of coal reserves that the Spee needed desperately. Located in what was called German New Guinea, it was unlike Germany's other colonies as there was no colonial defense force. Instead, all that was there was local indigenous police used to put down tribal wars and rebellions. The defense of Rabaul rested on 240 indigenous police and 50 German officers that were stationed at Bidapaka. While well stocked though, the gem of Bidapaka was the radio station. It allowed German communications across this portion of the Pacific and allowing the fleet to do the maneuvers they needed to do. The Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force, known as the AN and MEF, was sent to not only knock out the German stronghold and resupply base, but it was to take the radio and use it for the Australian Navy and the Allied ships in the area. The Australians started a recruiting drive, and once they obtained 3,000 volunteers, they moved on with their attack on Bidapaka. On September 11, 1914, the Australians landed a force that consisted of 500 recruits at Herbert Hohe, now known as Kokopo, six miles from Bidapaka radio station under command of Lieutenant Commander Charles Elwell. Initially, they met light resistance. The first combat for the Australians involved them moving forward and finding a single German sniper. They caught the sniper with a single shot to the hand before he could shoot at them. The Australians thought quickly and forced the German sniper to go into the open with the other German forces and to convince them to surrender as well. The sniper exaggerated the number of Australians present to the other Germans in the area and everybody surrendered in that local area. As the Australians approached the German lines at Bidapaka, about five miles away, they took fire from the Germans. The Australians utilized their artillery and the indigenous soldiers that were part of the German force retreated and regrouped at the second line of defenses. It was at this point that Australia lost their first person to the war. Able seaman Billy Williams was mortally wounded and when signaled to start what would amount to the loss of more than 60,000 men. The Australians were able to overcome and followed up and secured the second defensive line and captured 40 more German soldiers. The Australians stopped as they reached the third line of defenses and camped for the night. During that night, the Germans had pushed their own counterattack on the sleeping Australians, but after two hours of intense combat, the fighting stopped. The Germans realized they were outgunned and that they were cut off from future supplies, so they attempted to surrender the Australians. The Australians believed the white flags were a trap and avoided the Germans. Realizing this, the Germans used this opportunity to disappear into the surrounding area, and some continued to fight guerrilla style until the end of the war. Elwell led his men quickly inland in an attempt to secure the radio station. He found himself engaged in combat and lost at least three men during the firefight. When the Australians reached the radio station at Bidapaka, they found the Germans had already destroyed it, and along with it, the hopes of the Australian Navy to have with that radio to use. It was eventually repaired and entered service in 1916, more than a year after the battle. By the end of the battle, the Australians had suffered 12 casualties, including 7 killed and 5 wounded, while the Germans suffered much higher losses with 117 casualties, including 31 killed, 11 wounded, and 75 captured. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.